Hey everybody, this is Alex Mousset from alexmousset.coder.com and this is going to be lesson four. Here we're going to be focusing on how can you set up um, kind of like relationships. Again, it's a MongoDB is a document uh, database. So it's not really built for like relationships in the traditional sense in the same way like a relation database is where it's really optimized to run those kind of queries. So you can create relationships with Mongoose in the sense you can like state, tell Mongoose that certain data is related and it will run those queries to get you the data so that way you don't have to. Um, but here's where you start kind of necessarily escaping to what Mongo does really well. Like if you just have a bunch of data that's necessarily unrelated, like you just have a type of data, like let's say log data, um, that doesn't necessarily relate to something else off the bat. And you just need to track a lot of records of it and be able to look at them really quickly. Mongo's gonna be like really, really, really much more performant for that type of data. When you start getting into like a lot of data that's connected, you then want to start taking a look at relational databases. And then as those relationships get more and more and more complex, then you want to start thinking about like graph databases where um, everything is more like a standalone piece of data that relates to everything in a more uh, freestanding way. So um, not, again, no one tool fits every use case. Um, and again, MongoDB is flexible enough that it can fit many use cases. Um, but it's, um, again, just, just, just to kind of understand, like, uh, it is a, it's not necessarily like, it's a document database, not a relational database. Um, so again, I want to create a new lesson file, lesson 4.js. Okay. And again, a lot of these like differences in performance, you don't notice until you do things at scale. I mean, you're, you know, you have a really, like for a small application, that's not huge traffic, really any database is going to work for you. Um, when you start talking about like, you know, thousands, if not millions of user requests and users and whatnot, um, you start seeing the differences in performance and their different use cases. So it's really good to like read up on sort of like where different databases perform best. Because oftentimes, especially as your application scales, you may want to take a multi-database approach and start saying, okay, well, up till now, up till we got to this scale, everything worked with just like a database. But maybe certain workloads work better here and certain workloads work better there. So let's split stuff up a little bit. Um, but again, that's something you, you address with like a database architect when you have an application that's kind of hit that scale. So starting at the beginning with a Postgres or a, um, a MongoDB is totally cool. Until you get to like, you hit a certain point, then you have to kind of think a little bit more about how you're using these things. Okay. <clears throat> but relationships. So what we're going to do is that we want to create owners and dogs and we want to say that every dog has a single owner okay so that means we need to create two models so before we create our dogs model and schema we're going to create a u uh, owner model and schema owner okay and it's basically you know we just do the same thing owner owner schema equals new mongoose dot schema and then we're going to do the schema and every owner is going to have a name which is a string and an age which is a number and then that's it um, and then what we need to do is then enable the timestamps so timestamps true okay so there's our schema and now we want to create the model so const owner equals um mongoose dot model and again the model is going to be called owner okay and basically the schema will be owner schema Okay, so that, so now we have a new owner model. Now here's the problem. In my database up to this point, I already have a dog model. I don't want to call it something else because I don't really want to break convention. So what I'm going to do is that in my .env, I am going to uh, change the database name. Okay, my MongoDB, I'll just change it to my MongoDB one. So this is like a little trick because you change the database name, it'll create a new database, which means all your collections will be started from scratch. Okay, so I do that. That's just an easy way for me to like say, hey, I'm gonna work from a fresh, fresh thing without having to go back in here the Mongo and like clear everything out. One other thing I have to do is that it's been more than six hours since I recorded the last video. 
So I'm going to have to create another temporary username. So you see it's pending deletion. Uh, let's see if I can actually prevent that. This user is temporary and will be deleted pending deletion. Do not modify expiration. And let's 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 extend the expiration six hours from now. Okay. No user with this username exists. Okay, I guess I already got deleted. Okay. <clears throat> so in that case, let me just go to this page again. Yep, so you got deleted. Um, so I'm going to add a new database user, do that again, temp, same deal. Okay. And then again, you can actually put, do more granular, um, permissions. Okay. Where you can like, let it decide like, Hey, can this user access this database or that database? So there's just controls you can do here. Um, but I really, I'm just going to keep this pretty simple. Six hours add user. Okay. Cool. So that user now has six hours. So let's record some stuff. Okay. So now, now that I have the dog schema, what I want to do is I want to say that every dog has an owner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a new property on the dog schema called owner. And the type of this is not going to be like number string. What it's going to be, it's going to be mongoose dot, I think it's like dot object, or is it dot types? Yep, types dot object id okay so basically what this means is that this particular property is going to track the id of the related object okay um it's going to track the id of the related object and that's how it's going to keep track it and then i have to tell hey it's not going to know like it's not going to go look through every collection to figure out hey which collection has this related object okay all all it has it's that id it's that hash so i have to tell it whenever i refer to this thing what collection is going to have this thing okay so then i have to buy and i refer to that by mentioning the model okay which actually i think it's a uh, ref is the property uh so i'm gonna say it refers to owner okay so that has to match this okay so whenever i use so this has to match whatever i put here for this for the reference property okay cool so now basically what it means, this means I have one owner. I could have multiple owners. Like if I want to have like multiple owners, I could define this as an array and put square brackets around it. So now it's a array of object IDs. And then that would work too. I just want one owner. So we'll just make that not an array. Okay. And that's all fine and good. So first thing let's do, the first thing to do, let me just uh, delete all this. We want to create some dogs. Okay, so first we'll, well, actually first we want to create an owner. So we're going to create an owner. Okay, so const owner equals owner dot creates. And then again, we give it a name. We give, we pass in the property. So name Alex Merced, age 36, almost 37. Okay, so now the owner has been created. And again, we gotta make sure we use those await clauses so we don't print prompt later. So await, and now we can create a dog. So const dog equals await a dog dot create. Okay, and now what I want to do is say, um, uh, name, you know, we'll say name Ralph age seven. Okay, but now we want to add that owner property. Okay, we want to specify that owner property. So what I can do is I can just pass it that object that I already have from the database. Okay, so I'll just pass it the object and it's going to know to assign the ID as the value of the property. So you're like, oh, I have this object. What I really, but this field is the object ID field. So let me grab the object ID from this object and, and make that the value of this property. So I'm saying, hey, the owner that I have stored in this variable is the owner of this dog. Okay. And then we will console log dog so we can see what the result is. Okay. And then there's our script so far. So now I will run this. Okay. Um, so node. And that's going to be lesson 
for .js. Okay, let's see what it says. Okay, it looks like there was in somewhere path tag is required. Oh, yes, right. There was a tag property that I forgot about. Okay, so we don't need to create the own. Well, so I'll create a different owner. So we'll just because you can't create two owners with well, I didn't make it say it has to be unique, so that's fine. Um, so in this case, let me just add the tag property. Tag say one. There we go. And let's run that again. Okay, and that looks like it went smooth. Okay, you see here, we see we have the dog. And I can see that inside the dog, the owner is Alex. Okay, and so you see like that object is like nested in there. Okay, but it's actually, it looks like you see the object nested in there, but it actually isn't. Really, it's just this ID. Okay, but it ran a query on it when it saw that. Okay, now let's what happens now. What I'm going to do is that now instead of creating, I'm going to cancel or comment out all this creation logic. And what we're going to do is now we're going to query for that dog. Okay, so uh, search for Ralph. Let's see what we get. Const dog equals await dog dot find one and find me the dog that has the name of Ralph. Okay, and let's take a look at what the result is. Okay, so notice like it's this time it looks a little bit different. When I just query the data, okay, when I just query the data, I get the object, but the object and its owner doesn't show the actual object. It just shows the object ID. Because remember what I mentioned, the type is object ID. So what's being stored in the database is that ID. But then if we want to, there's a function we can use to tell Mongoose that, hey, when you get me the data, make sure that you populate this particular field with the actual object, not just the ID. So the way that works is that right here, after I do the find, I would chain a function called populate. And this assumes that you have some field on the thing that is a object ID field, okay? And if I had more than one field, like let's say there's multiple related fields, I can put them a bunch of strings in an array. But there's only one, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass the field, um, and, I, and then here has to be the name of the field. So notice here I'm spelling, spelling owner with a lower case, because this has to match the, the name of the property I'm looking to populate. So when I say, hey, populate owner, it's gonna go to the schema and say, okay, hey, the owner property, Oh, that's an object ID property based on the owner model. And then it's going to take that ID and search the owner collection for the related data. So watch what happens now that I've added populate at the end of the find. Okay, so now I should see that object then again populated. Cool. And see now, see now you see the object, that data is populated and accessible. Okay, so that's essentially how you would do that. So you can sit there and make add these references um, in your objects. But again, you're, it's not one big query. So essentially what you're doing is I'm querying the Ralph object and then it's running another query for the Alex for set object, which again, works fine. It's just like that the way it's going to be doing those subsequent queries, as I understand it, at a large scale is not going to necessarily be as efficient as in certain ways you can do it necessarily in a relational database. Although even in a relational database, if you're doing large scale joins, it's gonna be kind of slow. So it's like, then why not just put all the data in one data model? This is where you get into the idea of like normalization and denormalization. Like why don't I just say, hey, do every, every dog has an owner and that owner property, instead of it being a reference to some other object or some other collection, is just another object that's built into the data. So that way you don't have to do this extra query. The problem is, is that you end up picking necessarily more space and you're getting you may not always need this data and sometimes you may just want to query owners okay um so you may want to query both at different times um so you have to think about like not only like what your data is but like how do you plan on searching for it so since i may have the intention of searching only for owners sometimes i'm going to want owners in their own collection and then i'm going to prefer having that relation to each other if it's a situation i'm never going to look for owners i'm just going to look for dogs and generally i'm not going to have too many redundant owners like there's not gonna be like one person who owns like 50 dogs 
so there's not too much duplicative data in that case, then in that case, it makes more sense for me to just include it in the original dog model. Um, so you have to kind of think about sort of the way you're using the data and what you expect the data to look like as you sort of plan your data model to get sort of the best, most, the data models that are going to really fit your use case the best and also optimize your, your workloads the best. Um, cool. So that's this lesson. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day and enjoy.